Uh, hello everyone again. Uh, this is the short talk and in this short talk, as uh, I already mentioned in the uh, previous longer uh, talk, I will uh, mainly concentrate on the protein-protein uh, binding and the uh, applications of the chemical calculations uh, for the uh, calculation of relative free, energy, uh, relative free energy differences upon amino acid mutation in the context of protein-protein binding. And uh, for that we will use exactly the same methodology, so mainly uh, Chromax-based uh, MD sampling and uh, uh, PMX uh, for uh, the setup of these uh, calculations. And the only thing that we need to take into account now is that the thermodynamic cycle that we will be looking at, uh, uh, of course, will be different. So we are interested now in calculating the uh, delta G values uh, along the horizontal axis. Uh, so in, in this case it would be uh, calculating the change in the binding free energy upon uh, amino acid mutation this which is uh, in the top row there delta G1 so for the protein which is in its hollow state so bound uh, uh, a blue protein bound to the gray protein with the, and uh, uh, as a reference to that we'll use a, the same mutation in in the protein in its upper state, so when it is unbound from the, when the blue protein is not bound to the gray protein. And uh, in fact, this blue and gray, this uh, complex of blue and gray proteins is the, exactly the uh, application of which I would like to um, talk uh, for a few minutes. For So for this short talk, I have uh, selected two applications to uh, showcase. And the, the first one is uh, TCR, so T cell receptor, uh, interacting with the uh, major histocompatibility complex uh, uh, bound to a peptide, uh, so this PEP-MHC complex. This uh, system, this uh, uh, complex formed by TCR and peptide MHC, uh, is a is a, a very uh, important uh, plays a very important functional role in the cell. So the gray protein, which is uh, uh, known as MHC, major histocompatibility complex, it uh, its, uh, its uh, function is to uh, um, present on the to the cell surface uh, fragments of peptides, which could be either uh, mm, uh, mm, benign, uh, just native uh, fragments uh, of the protein of the pr native proteins in the cell, or they could be also fragments from uh, some pathogenic mm, pathogenic uh, infil infiltrants into the cell. So uh, mainly. Uh, uh, some some viral or uh, uh, bacterial proteins that uh, that could be detected in uh, probably just mainly viral proteins that can be detected later by the uh, or by the uh, T cell receptor. So the blue protein uh, which uh, binds to the peptide MHC complex and identifies uh, the potential the potential uh, hazardous uh, peptides. And once uh, it identifies that, yeah, this uh, red peptide, for example, is uh, a, a in, in the picture, it's it's a color, colored red, uh, and depicted as a surface there. So if this peptide is uh, for, um, identified as uh, dangerous, then the cell, the further cascade of um, of um, uh, sig signaling cascade would be initiated, and then uh, the uh, cell would be destroyed. All right. And it would be, of course, very interesting to uh, understand if our calculations uh, could identify uh, residues, so residue mutations, on the T cell receptor, uh, which uh, which would be uh, responsible for identification of these peptide, uh, uh, these uh, potentially dangerous peptides, right? And uh, here I colored uh, uh, some important residues that have been previously already tested in this in an experimental uh, SPR uh, ex mm, uh, SPR experiment here published previously so it uh, presents us a good test case and when we calculate run our alchemical free energy calculations we see that yeah indeed we can get a very good uh, um, agreement between the calculation and experiment uh, only uh, so on the left I'm showing just uh, on the x-axis is the experimental delta delta g and on the y-axis is the calculated one so we indeed can capture this effect of um, protein protein interaction and the uh, mutation induced free energy changes uh, on the right i'm showing uh, 
exactly the same data just uh, in, in a different representation in the bar plot so uh, you can see that only three uh, columns are I marked in red they uh, are slight, uh, slightly uh, giving slightly off values so slight uh, uh, inaccuracies but uh, in principle uh, these are only three out of what more than tw 20 almost 30 uh, data values data points now we could also ask a slightly different question could we also would this uh, method also work if we were to mutate the peptide right and here we have uh, collaborated uh, with with David uh, Cole uh, uh, who presented us with some uh, SPR data uh, to benchmark our calculations and here we see a, a similar picture where we also have a, a, a fairly good agreement uh, there are a few the data set of course is of course much smaller there are fewer residues to mutate here on the peptide and uh, uh, we have uh, a, a few more uh, more reddish points right R red uh, columns however it is an interesting observation here you see one uh, leucine to alanine at the position 3 is missing and the uh, reason for it miss to to be missing there is that after our calculation we noticed a very large disagreement with the experiment and we were puzzled by that so we uh, came back to uh, our collaborator and asked uh, uh, maybe uh, they had some ideas about this and actually they went back to their essay and said oh indeed this uh, data point is uh, not reliable at all we mm, should should not have uh, sent it to you uh, as as a as a benchmark point because it was there was something wrong with our with our essay for that so in fact uh, it is um, uh, the calculation in this case was even able to pre uh, to identify some some uh, problem with the experimental setup in that case uh, all right so this was a, a very brief uh, uh, brief uh, highlights of these uh, TCR and uh, peptide MHC complexes and uh, for the second uh, second case that I would like to show uh, I would like to uh, tell a little bit about the uh, spike protein from SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus binding interacting with the human ACE2 uh, receptor uh, so uh, the, the uh, spike spike glycoprotein is uh, here I'm showing it in gray and red it's the same protein gray and red uh, it is uh, the protein responsible for uh, mainly responsible for the uh, the co uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus entering the human cells. Mm, how it uh, does uh, enter, uh, how it starts this interaction, it, by, uh, it does it by flipping one of its uh, um, uh, receptor binding domains, this RBD domain, RBDs, uh, colored in red in this picture, it flips it up and uh, interacts, uh, uh, forms a, a strong interaction with human ACE2 receptor which is there in blue if we look a little bit closer at it this uh, there is a, a, a quite well defined interaction uh, interface there mainly from the uh, human ACE2 receptor side there is a one helix that is interacting uh, with the there is a helix interacting with the RBD and uh, if we were to color all of those interface residues you would see that yeah they are quite fairly localized here just colored by the mm, some distance criterion from the RBD and uh, of course now if we we uh, were to ask a question so uh, which actually residues uh, uh, and how much uh, their mutations in these two would contribute to the binding uh, between these two proteins we would like to uh, if, if we were to ask such a question we would need to scan all of these um, residues colored here in, in yellow uh, however of course scanning mm, all of these residues and uh, trying out all of them all of them uh, potential mutations would result in something like uh, 700 mutations in total so by means of alchemical calculations it is possible however it, it would take us uh, a long time to sample such a such a large data set uh, so we here uh, here uh, I used uh, a different approach so I, I divided into two uh, tiers and firstly I uh, ran a rather quick scan with Rosetta which is computationally uh, cheaper than alchemical molecular dynamics based uh, some calculations uh, 
and with Rosetta I calculated mm, uh, all of the possible substitutions of those uh, yellow uh, residues into each other uh, amino acid type. Mm, Rosetta is a, a it is not a molecular dynamics simulation, but it has its own sampling uh, al uh, set of sampling algorithms, and it does not use a classical molecular mechanics force field, but it uses an empirical um, knowledge-based uh, statistical uh, potential. And uh, in the second round, only from those predictions, the most promising predictions uh, made by Rosetta, uh, I selected about 100 mutations to probe alchemically. So let's immediately have a look how those results look like. Here I'm showing all of the data points, about 700 data points uh, on the x-axis would be mutations. I'm not listing them because there would be far too many of them to write down. Um, but uh, on the y-axis we see delta delta G. So blue delta delta G, so change in the binding free energy, would mean that uh, um, the mutation, this data point, is stabilizing the interaction. So most of the data points are either white, and so they fall mm, uh, somewhere within um, uh, one kilocalorie per mole region of uh, not uh, of, of very weak uh, change in the binding free energy, or are red there on the right side where they uh, destabilize the interactions. And if we just here, I'm just showing exactly the same plot, just showing uh, uh, the most interesting and maybe the least interesting regions. Or, or maybe also if, if we were to search for the mutations that destabilize the protein, they would also be interesting, the red ones. But uh, in this case, we concentrated further on the blue on the blue data points there on the lower left of the, of the second plot. And all of those calculations, all of those uh, possible mutations, I, uh, I then uh, subjected to an alchemical scan. So now these results are, uh, that I'm showing now are uh, um, coming from the uh, alchemical free energy calculations. Now every data point in the top plot uh, there there are uh, uh, there uh, are about a hundred data points, and in the lower plot uh, it is exactly the same data. I'm only showing uh, those that would be potentially interesting in in, in a sense that uh, they should be stabilizing those mutations should be stabilizing the the protein protein binding and you can see that now uh, these data points uh, are colored uh, in either well reddish or bluish color uh, and this color scale is another free energy calculation which actually reflects on the stability of the protein so uh, one uh, value delta delta g that we are looking at the, on the y axis is reporting on the uh, free energy of binding, but as you remember from the uh, first, from the first and second lecture this morning, uh, is that um, is that uh, we are also able to calculate uh, the actual stability. So, how much uh, folding free energy of this of the mutation would affect the protein itself, and uh, the color scale then tells us that if the color if the color, for example, is red, then uh, the this mutation. It, it would destabilize the protein. If the color is blue, then the protein itself, so ACE2, would be stabilized. Uh, so the most interesting um, mutations then to probe experimentally would be those that are both uh, negative, so uh, very uh, have very negative values in the delta delta G, and also are blue or bluish, so that they are in the experiment, the protein would also fold properly and would be stable. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, in, uh, we do not have a collaboration to probe exactly this complex uh, exp experimentally because it would be very interesting now to see uh, how our predictions, how well our predictions do in an experimental setup. Uh, but uh, we uh, uh, have established a collaboration to probe uh, a slightly mode, uh, uh, experimentally probe a slightly different system where only one helix is. Uh, uh, the main, the, this main helix that I highlighted before is interacting with the um, with the RBD uh, of of the SARS-CoV-2, and in this case we can run exactly the same protocol uh, by to identify those residues that would be um, interacting uh, that those those residues that upon mutation would be uh, uh, most mostly increasing both uh, binding uh, affinity and increasing the folding stability of the 
helix itself and here I color those uh, our most promising candidates so the two or three bluish uh, uh, residues there on the helix are now uh, being tested experimentally so I'm, uh, I, I hope that uh, I can uh, update have an update on this and maybe you can read in some uh, near future scientific publication how how actually it all worked out all right uh, these are my uh, acknowledgments to people who uh, collaborated uh, on on these two projects and my funding thank you